So I just want to make this short video to kind of demonstrate um, some of the fun stuff you can do with uh, DOSBox and kind of looking at old uh, software from like the 90s. So this assumes you already have like Windows 3.1 installed on DOSBox and you have everything set up for sound and CD-ROM and, and graphics. Um, I might do videos in the future of that, but for now we're just going to go over um, a very early uh, Compton's Encyclopedia version. And again, this is before Wikipedia or YouTube or any of that stuff, so <laughs> keep that in mind, the, the limitations of like this software. So what's cool is you can go to archive.org and actually find these old ISO images. So this is where I got this one. So now we have to do is just load it in. So I'm going to be using DOSBox for this, and it's very easy. Once you already have it set up, you can just use image mount and that'll make it show up like a CD on the drive. And then we're going to start Windows, and I've installed this once before, but in this case I need to reinstall it because I changed resolutions to actually make it lower so it would look better. Anyways, with Windows applications at the time, you would typically just um, select the drive, and it's usually going to be setup.exe. So run this command, and should go by pretty quick since this is emulated. So we'll just install it under drive C and throw some kind of error, probably because we're using DOSBox. And we're just going to try to ignore that. Um, one thing about this is that it installs a video for Windows drivers. I think it complains, again, probably because we're emulating. Um, yeah, you'll see there's the icon from my previous install attempt, so we'll just delete that. And then here it is. We'll start it up the encyclopedia. Um, as you can see, this is version 1.0.1. .1. Nice little about screen there. And here's the opening screen. Again, just to verify, came out around 1992. Uh, this actually came with my first um, IBM 486 PC, and you can see how it just has like all these different categories, so uh, let's try looking for something pretty simple here. And again, you have a list of topics, and it's basically kind of like a HTML page, but for some reason the pictures aren't in line. You have to click each one to view it. Um, I think that's because it, it, it takes a while to load off the CD-ROM, so they didn't want it to try it like load all in one page. So you can only click on one at a time. Like here's Cray Computer. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward. And again, you can also search for pictures. So let's search for a picture of computer. Just click on a random one here. So yeah, you'll notice the pictures are, are pretty small. Um, yeah, that's just kind of the limitations at the at the time. So you can make them bigger, but um, again, the resolution is very low. Uh, this encyclopedia also had animations. You could think of these kind of like animated GIFs. Um, you can step through them. Not a whole lot there. So here's another one, kind of interesting. They have some text descriptions below. And another interesting thing was the introduction of video on computers. So this was the first computer we had that was capable of rendering videos. And it, it's just kind of amazing at the time um, to, to see, you know, moving video on your computer. Uh, it was kind of a novelty at back then. So let's look at these bears. Again, the, the, the CD-ROM only had about like a couple dozen videos and even then they're just kind of these post postage stamp sized things. So <laughs> So yeah, we can also go into full screen mode here and you'll, you'll see it doesn't even like fill the full screen because even even then they knew like it probably wouldn't look good um, doing that at such a low resolution. So let's just look at another one here. May 20th, 1927. 
Charles Lindbergh flew his monoplane, the spirit of... So let's look at um, another feature. These are slideshows, which are just a sequence of images with audio overlaid on them. So let's try playing this one. Mountains rise prominently above their surroundings and are generally distinguished by their irregular surfaces. To be formally classified as a mountain... Beautiful. So again, now it's just going to switch between different pictures and it will talk through it. So the reason they did this instead of video was just probably to save on uh, disk space. Um, again, you can do sounds. So that's pretty. And if you want, you can click on and actually see the article where this sound is actually embedded. So that's a nice feature. Just another quick feature that's kind of nice to have is a dictionary. So we can just search for computer. And yep, that's still what a computer is. So yeah, it has a dictionary, thesaurus. Um, I'm not sure what this means, foreign words and phrases. Oh, okay, so... Huh. Anyway, that's the dictionary. So yeah, here you see like you can you can actually tile and have sounds, slideshows, and like all this stuff on your screen um, all, all at once. So that was kind of the modern thing back then was that, wow, you have windows and you can move them around and have all this stuff all at once on your screen, which is really difficult to do back in the day because, again, this is only running at 640 by 480, so it really wasn't until later until you had the larger monitors at the higher resolutions that um, doing multiple windows helped. Uh, so here we can see, like, early version of Google Earth. <laughs> Not really. Um, I think essentially you're just going to get like major cities. So like if we just like zoom in here, you can see like, yeah, there's some of the larger cities are going to show up here, but um, you're not going to have roads or highways or anything. This is just, you know, basic geography, like the capitals of states, capitals of countries, things you would need for like book reports. Um, so yeah, let's just... Go to another part here. So yeah, you can see all the states. Um, and then I want to say this is kind of like how the Yahoo directory worked, where it's like based on topics. So if you didn't know what you wanted to look for, you could start by Earth and geography, or you could do, you know, just bring up an article out of the encyclopedia. So, yeah, and again, th I think this was geared more for like, oh, the the student in grade school or high school that's doing some kind of report and uh, needs needs an article. So, wait. So I hope you found this video interesting, just taking a look back at what life was like before we had Wikipedia.